Hi guys, welcome to another video from uh, Rossi Audio and um, today I'm gonna make two videos and this is the first video um, yesterday I had the chance of um, testing and reviewing uh, a pair of speakers uh, JBL 2600 or 2600 so that's the first video I'm gonna make now is about that test and that review um, I got those speakers in a storage auction and from the door they look to be in fairly good condition um, they have an oak look cabinet um, so they, they have a light wood color to them you probably will see a picture before I before I start talking there will be some pictures of them um, how did they sound well I tested them up against my VS80 from Sarinvega over here they're about the same size same configuration uh, two-way with an eight, eight inch woofer um, I tested the JBLs with four different CDs uh, one was a hard rock heavy metal CD the other one was more R&B and then I had a country CD and just a pure pop CD with Michael Jackson that you can't go testing speakers without Michael Jackson um, the, the JBLs have a fairly good smooth tweeter that was what I noticed right off the bat when I listened to them that the tweeter was very smooth very comfortable to listen to the mid was also very good and smooth so I want to say that in the upper register the JBL 2600 was was fairly good um, however things changed when we're talking about low-end reproduction and uh, this has nothing to do about booming basses or anything like that but when you listen to certain songs that I use as a reference and I know what kind of reproduction that the, the bass and the drums and all this stuff has and can have on the speakers that I consider to be somewhat a reference um, then the JBL fell flat the um, the lower end I want to say like from 60 Hertz and down really not much action down there there was a little bit but not much it was very very flat so if you're gonna have JBL 2600 they absolutely benefit from being used with a subwoofer or even on the pair of speakers that are better on the lower end reproduction the Surrey Mega VS80 that I tested them up against which is not the reference speaker at all um, ha has a better better reproduction in in the bottom end but the JBL is maybe a little bit better um, in the tweeter section a little bit smoother um, the Surrey Mega is a little bit more in your face when it comes in the tweeter section but overall the Surrey Vega VS80 knocked the uh, 2600 from JBL off the floor so you, you might say well what is the reference bookshelf speaker well I have had the chance of had both Boston acoustic I have some, had some smaller Snell models uh, Dali um, so those models and Wharfdale um, so those models are that is in the same size as the JBL is way better is JBL 2600 a bad buy or a bad choice of speaker no I, I don't want to say that because you get a fairly good mid-range and a fairly good tweeter and the transition between the mid-range and the tweeter goes very smoothly so it's a very nice speaker to listen to but like I said you need a subwoofer to to go with it because it does not have much information in the lower end the, the cabinets like I said it, it looked like it had been living a rough life it had dings on the edges not like small dings it had big dings so 
I'm going to part those speakers out because the cabinets are beyond salvageable. Um, but um, if you can come across those speakers, and I've been looking online to kind of find like a median um, price point of where they sell used. And from what I have seen, it's anywhere between $75 and $150 for the pair. Um, I don't think that seven. I think that seventy five dollars for the pair is a good good bargain. You, you get a good speaker, pair of speakers for seventy five dollars. I would pay that if I if I didn't have room for bigger speakers, and but I had room for bookshelf bookshelf speakers and maybe a little subwoofer to go with it. Um, then seventy five dollars for the JBL twenty six hundred is a fair price to pay for it. I don't think you're doing a awesome deal, but you're not doing a bad deal either. So you get a good pair of speakers for 75 bucks. Would I pay 150 for them? No. I think 150 on the used market is way too much for the JBL 2600. Um, the most I would ever pay for a kind of speaker like that is maybe 100 bucks. And that's maybe. I think $75, $80 is where it should be and where the market value is on that pair of speakers. Um, the crossover in them is very simple. Uh, I took it out and looked at it. Very simple crossover. Nothing fancy there. Um, so when you overall, when you when you listen to the JBL twenty six hundreds, they don't disappoint in any way, but they don't they don't wow you help in any way either. Um, when I listened to them, I didn't go like, oh my god, wow, this sounds really good. It was good. It was average good. It's what you can expect from a pair of bookshelf speakers of that size in a two-way configuration with an 8 inch woofer. But when you look at the woofer that is in the 2600, you can clearly see that they had made that woofer uh, to be more like a mid-range than, than a woofer that goes further down. So you can see right off the bat. So. If you compare that woofer with the Saren Vega woofer that is in the VS80, who has who's built for bigger X mass, um, the Saren Vegas has cast aluminum frames. The JBL has stamped steel. So, would I recommend the JBL 2600? To a certain degree, I would. And if I was going to rate them from 1 to 10, and 10 is the best, I'll probably put them in somewhere between 6 and 7. 6.6, 6, 6.5, maybe 7 at the most. But most likely 6, 6.5. Would I recommend them? Like I said, if you don't have a lot of demands from your speakers, you just want a pair of speakers, and those are one of the choices, um, I would I would look into it um, because you get a very, fairly good sounding speaker in the frequency range that it operates in but it has its faults it, it lacks a few things and <clears throat> it's absolutely not a spectacular speaker in any way so if I roll the dice it will be nah maybe that's where I'm standing on it. Can you get better speakers for the same price? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you can probably find speakers like Paradigm, PSB, Infinity, even Surin Vega, um, Boston Acoustic, in the same price range that sounds better. Um, and there's a few others too. Um, the JBL 2600 is a newer speaker, so I wouldn't call it like vintage vintage. It's like that. It's not like a 70s or early 80s speaker, but um, it's hard to to kind of like compare them to older speakers. So if you're looking for older speakers, then the JBL 2600 is, uh, wouldn't be for you. Um, if I had the choice, if if I had the J, JBL 2600 and for 75, 80 bucks, and I could get a pair of Saren Vega VS80 for the same price, which you can, um, because the Saren Vegas range from like 
75 up to 150, 180 bucks. I will go for the Cern Vegas. They have better sound overall. Overall better sound. But then again, it, it is a preference what you want. Some people like the JBL sound, some people don't. So it's all up to you. But on the recommendation side, it's a nah. Not no, but not a yes either. But it is what it is. So um, I had high hopes for the JBL 2600 because the cabinet uh, had a good size. It, it, it's, to be a book, bookshelf speaker, it has a good size. So I was um, I was hoping for some more low end re reproduction, but then again, it was it's a sealed cabinet, and um, that makes it a little bit more flat, a little bit more punchy, a little bit harder, not as deep, not as much deep bass, but um, it was okay as long as I was listening to country. It it played country fairly well. It played. Um, hard rock and metal, not in a convincing way. It was that's where you really could hear that it, it lacked something. And when it came over to um, soul and R and B, which has a lot of deep bass notes, it, it lacked a lot. And when you when you put on Michael Jackson, and and you played a few songs with him. And you know what kind of production he puts into his CDs and all that stuff. There was a lot of things that lacked. A lot. But it also depends on the music that you're listening to. Like I said, they function very well on country music. So maybe JBL 2600 is a, a country music speaker. You can use it for that. I see it being a good um, speaker if you listen to a lot of a cappella. Um, Maybe some music that doesn't have a lot of uh, low end or bass reproduction or, or information. So if you're listening to music that are, let me put it like this: if you're listening to music that are light and easy, um, doesn't have a lot of information in a broad frequency uh, range, then the JBL 2600 will will suit you really well because, like I said, the mid range and the tweeter, nothing to complain about there. Very smooth very correct very 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 detailed so that was the test of the J JBL 2600 uh, I wish I could say more but they didn't really engage me to to do further testing I spent an hour and a half um, sitting down listening to them and after an hour and a half I went like nah I think I've had enough so that's where I stand on it is JBL 2600 a bad speaker no is it a good speaker Yes. Is it a spectacular speaker? No. Does it need a subwoofer to go with it to get a better result and to make them sound better? Absolutely. That was the review and that was the verdict of the JBL 2600.